Probably not. Okay. Very much. What are you shooting over there? I think you have the rooms for the cameras back there. Stay low. You should have plenty of room. Are you okay? One question at a time. Okay, do you want to start this way? They said you might have an opening statement, do you? Well, then let me ask you about Governor Scott Walker. Today he endorsed Ted Cruz. He says Cruz is the common sense conservative, and he suggests that your brand of politics would not work in Wisconsin. Well, he stole the word common sense conservative from me because I'm the one who came up with the term. He never used that term before in his life. Uh, look, I beat him very badly. He was uh, going in as a favorite in the presidential run. I knew he couldn't endorse me. I never called him and asked for an endorsement. Uh, I told him and I told a lot of people what was going on in Wisconsin, the real numbers in terms of jobs, in terms of what's happening with trade, uh, in terms of a $2.2 billion imbalance, uh, and lots of other problems. And after saying that, I said, well, there's no way he's going to endorse me. Now, I will say, once I told them the facts, and once I told the public the facts, he went from 22 or 24 percent down to zero when he quit the race. So obviously, uh, I would have loved to have gotten his support, but I didn't expect it, and I don't think it'll mean anything. Now, he's the guy that you gave money to. You I helped did. get him reelected. Not only did I, came? not only did I help him, he came up to my office a year ago or so, prior to obviously his run, which didn't work out so well for him. Uh, he came up to my office and he gave me a plaque, a beautiful plaque, which at some point I think I'll bring over to Wisconsin. I can only say Corey's a fine person. I looked at the tape, but the tapes were supplied by me. You know, those tapes, just so you understand. This is a very high-end club, and we had tapes all over the place, and so we supplied those tapes. Uh, and those tapes, to me, are very conclusive. A lot of people are uh, looking and saying, how can anybody be charged? She was, she was actually, if you look at her, my book, and according to a lot of people, she's grabbing at me. And he's acting as an intermediary and trying to block her from doing that. The news conference was over. It was done. It was finished. And she was running up and grabbing and asking questions. And she wasn't supposed to be doing that. Uh, and I think he should, I told him, I said, you should never settle this case. You should go all the way. I think they've really hurt a very good person. And I know it would be very easy for me to discard people. I don't discard people. I stay with people. That's why I stay with this country. That's why I stay with a lot of people that are treated unfairly and that's one of the reasons I'm the front runner by a lot if you look at that tape he was very very seriously maligned and I think it's very unfair it's so only an allegation but you, what does it say about the campaign I think it says nothing about the campaign. I think if you look at it, he was trying to block her. That's the way I would view it. And she's grabbing me and asking questions. She's not even supposed to ask questions. You know, the press conference lasted for a long time, like 45 minutes. And I was leaving, and she runs up, and you can see, in fact, there are pictures where she's gra I could show you some. I actually have some in the other room. But there are pictures where she's grabbing my arm, and I'm going like this, trying to get her off. I think it's a disgrace that something like that could take place and I'm shocked by it and I'll stick by people and I know it's probably not even politically good for me to do but when somebody is maligned so unfairly as that I will stick by it. Mr. Trump, seems like a stack a deck in Wisconsin. What do you mean by that and stack Well I think we have a lot of people
people that are saying a lot of false things. Uh, I'm going to make much better trade deals than anybody in Wisconsin. Nobody can create jobs like I can create. Nobody's better on the border. Uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, from, as you know, from Phoenix, from the Phoenix area, from Arizona, uh, is with me 100% and, and endorsed me because I'm the strongest on the border by far. You look at a guy like Ted Cruz, he's very, very weak on jobs. He doesn't know anything about jobs. He knows nothing about jobs. Uh, we call him Lion Ted because of what he did with uh, Ben Carson, where he said Ben Carson had left the race and he hadn't left the race at all. But there are many other things. And, uh, you know, look, I don't see Ted Cruz making it. I don't think Ted Cruz could win the general at all. And I think I'll beat Hillary Clinton very easily. Once I put my, once I put my uh, mind to beating Hillary Clinton, right now I have two other people that I want to beat. And hopefully I'll start that process and complete that process in Wisconsin. You're you're sure you're sure you said that you're going to stick by Corey, but will his role change at all in the campaign as his case unfolds? Well, I hope not. I think it's really unfair. It's a very unfair thing to a person. I was watching some of the television coverage, and a lot of people were on television saying, how could somebody be charged for that? I mean, they see it. I'm, again, I'm the one that gave the tapes. Nobody else gave the tapes. The tapes were from me. And they see it, and they see what took place, and it's so minor. And if you look at her initial statements, before she knew that we had tapes of her, she was talking about being pulled down or dragged down or something to that effect. And all of a sudden, when she saw that there were tapes, she changed her tone a little bit. Uh, I think it's a very, very sad thing. And I think it's very unfair to a good person. He's got a family. He's got four beautiful children. I think it's very, very unfair to a man with a, a wonderful family back in New Hampshire who gets what, a criminal situation over that. In fact, some of the reporters are saying, a number of them tweeted, but some of them said, wow, that was minor compared. You get pushed around, you get shoved. And she was grabbing me. She was, do I, does that mean that I'm supposed to file charges against her? She was grabbing me. That's why you see the picture of me like that. Now, maybe he was trying to get her off of me. But I think it's a very, very sad day in this country when a man can be destroyed over something like that. And you just look at that tape throughout the whole process, and you see how unfair it is. It's a very unfair. He's a good person. He's a good person with a wonderful family. And for him to be charged over something like that. And remember, she grabbed me before he even broke anything. And it almost looks like he's just trying to create a little room. Because to be honest with you, the news conference had finished. It was over. It was done. And I was leaving, rapidly leaving the premises. So all of a sudden, she bolts out of nowhere. So I think it's very, very unfair. Right, let's let's ask, let me ask about uh, Paul Ryan. You're in Paul Ryan's country yeah. here. Uh, this is Blue Collar Union. Right. Uh, what policies do you think you can work with, with Speaker Ryan on, that you would both agree on? Well, I'll tell you one policy that whether we agree or not, I'm going to do if I win. And it's going to be great for Wisconsin and for the country, and that's trade. Because our jobs are being sucked away. I have some of the statistics from Wisconsin. Wisconsin is doing very poorly, by the way, for those that know. And the reason that uh, Walker went way down, and even though I supported him initially, and he thanked me by coming up to my office and handing me a plaque, the reason that Walker went way down is because when I gave all of the statistics on how badly Wisconsin's doing, uh, the jobs that are being taken away, the businesses, the lack of growth, when I gave all of those statistics, he couldn't dispute them. I mean, they're, they're there. And I'll be political giving them again. Dispute some of those. Well, I don't know what political. I don't care. I get these statistics from government agencies. I mean, they're just perfect statistics. Do you think he? So I'll be doing that. I'll be doing that during my first. Do you think he mishandled the public yeah. union issue? Well, I can say this: uh, Wisconsin is in turmoil. It's always in turmoil. I sit back in different states and I watch and I see that Wisconsin is constantly fighting and uh, recall elections and uh, I've never seen anything like it, frankly, in the country. So you could make a case it's a good thing because they're fighters. You could also make a case it's a bad thing. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of hate going on in Wisconsin, and I think it's bad. But worse than that are the numbers. Your numbers are terrible, and I will give you those numbers. In fact, I have them. If you want, I can get them right now. Scott Walker's Mr. numbers, though, when you look at his approval rating among GOP primary voters, is very high. You're going after him. Is that a gamble? Is no, that no, a I, don't I don't care about a gamble. Here's, here's the thing. I think he's probably a nice guy. I mean, he came in dressed in a motorcycle outfit with a motorcycle, like he's a big, strong motorcycle guy. By the way, the motorcycle people love me. It's like my highest demographic. They love me. I go to things, I have 700 motorcycles waiting for me with people. So I don't know what he was doing, but he was, you know, constantly riding around on motorcycles. If 
the people like him, that's fine. I think he's a nice person. I don't care about whether he's nice or not. You look at the statistics on what's happening with jobs and many other factors in Wisconsin. You look at your $2.2 billion deficit. You look at your numbers. They were so negative that I went, I, I didn't even use all of them. I didn't know how bad they were until I looked today. So he's now fair game. I would have never said this, but he's now fair game because he endorsed Cruz, who's never going to win, by the way. He, he's too strident. Uh, Cruz has no chance of winning in the general election. Zero. But with, and I don't think he has a chance of getting the nomination, frankly. Uh, and he's way behind. He's won six states or seven states. I've won, I think, 21 or 22 already. Uh, I say this. It's only results-oriented. I look at what's going on in Wisconsin. I have so many friends in Wisconsin. It's a great place. I think I'm going to do really well in Wisconsin, I hope. I'm going to be here for a long period of time until Tuesday evening, until the election evening, maybe stay overnight then. If I win, I'll stay overnight. If I don't win, I may get out of there a little bit quicker, right? Mr. But, but I, think, I think I have a very good chance of winning Wisconsin. I will say this. When I reveal today, which I'm going to do with my speech, how bad the numbers are in Wisconsin, how jobs have been taken away by foreign countries, it's unbelievable. And I had no idea. Even when I beat him, and don't forget, I was the one that beat Scott Walker in the primaries. It was nobody else. That's why when he left, he said, we have to stop Donald Trump. We have to stop Donald Trump. Because I went after him. And all I did, I wasn't bad to him. I just told the numbers of how poorly Wisconsin is doing. And he left the race very early. He gave up. He quit. Very, very early. Earlier than most. Jeb stayed around and others stayed around. But he really left very early. And frankly, I don't even know why he left that early. But his poll numbers went way down. They went from being like the leader of the pack into almost the back of the pack. The reason I was able to do that so easily is because his numbers are horrible in Wisconsin. I'll be revealing those numbers. And they're numbers you probably have, but you don't report them. Because a lot of people think he does a good job as governor. And he's a nice person. I don't mind. I'm just going to reveal the numbers. And you see for yourself. Look at what's happened to the jobs. Look at what's happened to your growth. Look at what's happened to trade, how horrible trade has been for Wisconsin, how devastating it's been for Wisconsin, and you're, you're in the middle of the pack, so uh, we'll be talking about it at this point. Mr. Trump, you got kicked around on talk radio, on Wisconsin uh, conservative yeah. talk radio. You got kicked around yesterday on that. There were headlines saying, you know, Sykes, well, Sykes, you know, uh, I don't know anything about Sykes. Look, I think I did very well with well, Sykes. Did you not know that, that you know, talk radio... I heard, I was, I, I heard they were against me. ...for the Never Trump... No, no, I heard they were against me. I understand that. You know, they're for the establishment, and they're for guys that are running. The problem with this country is we have the establishment out there, including those people. Now, you take a look at Rush Limbaugh, and he likes Trump. And you take a look at a lot of the other ones, Michael Savage, and many of the other ones, they really like Trump a lot. Uh, this particular group, I was told, they're not going to be very nice and frankly they were fine it was you know I, I if you listen to that debate you would say Trump won on the merits because Wisconsin is not doing well it's not doing well now people can say oh that's insult it's not insulting it can do well but we have to change trade policies because we are getting ripped off in the whole country by trade by jobs by other countries how would your policy? A lot, of what? a lot of hate in Wisconsin. How would your policy if not increase that hate? Well, I think it's going to increase jobs. It's going to increase incomes. It's going to increase profits. It's going to increase a lot of things, and it won't be. But there's a lot of hate in Wisconsin. I mean, I looked at those rallies. I looked at those, you know, that that tremendous, you know, that interaction between groups of people, and I said, "Wow, is this in the United States?" That was tough. And I give Walker some, in one way, I give him credit because he was willing to withstand it. In another way, I don't give him credit because, you know, you'd like to be able to bring people together a lot better than that. But when I looked at his numbers and how bad Wisconsin is doing, that's why there's such hatred. All you have to do is look at the numbers. When you look at the numbers on how poorly Wisconsin is doing in jobs and trade and so many other things, the farming, how they're getting killed, uh, then you understand why there's such hatred and such fighting in Wisconsin. Well, let me ask you, 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 you said that there's no one who's a bigger supporter of women. Nobody. Support. Nobody. Um, so Nobody incident, is a bigger supporter of women than Donald Trump. This incident with Michelle Fields, though, are you worried that will undermine that? I don't statement? think so. Especially because Democrats you know, it's, some it's, Republicans yeah, are jumping It's very it. interesting. I know Piers Morgan and many, many people, they saw that tape, and they said, you got to be kidding. you got to be kidding. Again, the tape was given by me. 
because my places are very successful and I have cameras all over the ceiling. That tape was given by me. So maybe it was political, maybe it was something, but when you look at that tape, I guarantee you, you were pushed around more getting onto this plane right now than she was pushed around. You take a look at this, look at you folks back here with the cameras on this small space. You got pushed around more than she got pushed around. Uh, I, I just can't stand by and watch a man's life be destroyed, be destroyed, and take a look at her original statement. Just look at her original statement before she knew that Donald Trump is rich and has cameras all over the ceiling so that we can protect people from the standpoint of security, fire, etc., etc. Take a look at her original statement, the first words out of her mouth about her going down and, uh, you know, pulled down or something to that effect. She was pulled down. Kind of pulled down. She doesn't even change her expression. I mean, I looked at the tape. And by the way, if he was that way, I would have fired him in two seconds. I wouldn't care. I couldn't have cared less. But I looked at the tape. There's not even a change of expression on her face. And then I looked at Internet, and you take a look at the tweets, and people are saying, you got to be kidding me. See, Let me ask you about Wisconsin. Let me ask you about Wisconsin. Mr. Trump. Response to all this. It have been I, I think it's something that's disgraceful. I think that you as a reporter and all of you as a reporter probably get treated a lot rougher than that on a daily basis. Uh, I have never seen anything like it. I cannot imagine how they did it. Uh, he's got a very good lawyer. Uh, they will fight it. I told him he should never settle that case. And I know that's not to my, that is not to my benefit. But I think when people see that tape and they take a look at that tape and they take a look at her initial statement before she knew she was on tape, take a look at that. You have to see it. And you take a look at her initial statement. It sounded like she got thrown out of a building. You take a look at she that and you, and then, excuse me? She did get bruises on her. Own. I don't know if there were bruises from that. Why? Who said there were bruises from that? How do you know those bruises weren't there before? The, that's what the police said. I don't know what the police said. How do you know those bruises weren't there before? I'm not a lawyer, but she said she had a bruise on her arm. I mean, to me, and you know, if you're going to get squeezed, you, wouldn't you think that she would have yelled out a scream or something if she has bruises on her arm? I, she, she, let me, take a look at her. Let me ask you take take a look at her facial expression. Her facial expression doesn't even change. So, you know, you said bruises are up. How did they get there? Who put them there? I don't know that he put them there. In any event, I'm sticking up for a person because I'm not going to let a person's life be destroyed over somebody that we have on tape and you just take a look at what people are saying when they see that incident on tape. Let me ask and no jury, in my opinion, no jury would convict a man and destroy a man's life over what you would. Let me ask you about Wisconsin. To to the Latino vote. I, to ask you about that. I think I'm doing great with the Hispanics. And the Hispanics are great people. I have thousands that work for me, tens of thousands over the years. Uh, just at Doral, I own Doral in Miami. And just at Doral alone, I have probably eight, 900 Hispanics working for me. Uh, I have many, many Hispanics. They're phenomenal people. Uh, I just say that in the case of Mexico, we're being treated very badly. We have a trade deficit of $58 billion, and they're, being, they're treating us very badly. They could stop the drugs from coming in if they wanted. Mexico could stop the drugs from coming into our country. I won New Hampshire, the state of New Hampshire, and I said to those people, because they told me the number one problem they have is heroin pouring in from the southern border. I said, if I get elected, I'm going to stop it. I won in a landslide in New Hampshire. You saw that. When you look at beautiful New Hampshire and you say their number one problem is heroin, well, you have a huge drug problem in Wisconsin. Everybody does. And it's pouring in through the border. I'm the only one that's going to stop it. Uh, politicians all talk, no action guys like Cruz. He's all talk. Uh, these are not people that are going to stop it, believe me. All he can do, all he can do is talk. And he, frankly, in my opinion, he doesn't talk very well. And he's under Sorry. great pressure because he's losing badly. And he doesn't react well under pressure. I've seen that. And all you have to do is take a look at the debates. Every one of the debates, the polls said, I won every single debate. Uh, and he's a politician. All he does is debate. The first challenge due to a debate instead of the town. We've had 11 debates. According to the polls, I've won every single debate. I don't think we can be asked any more questions that we haven't been. Same questions, same people. Everybody knows. They know what they're getting. With me, we're going to get great trade deals. We're going to have a strong military. We're going to take care of our vets. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to have a great country again. So you're saying with, no more debate. With any of these policies. And remember this, very importantly. I'm self-funding my campaign. I'm putting up my own money. 
these guys, Cruz and, and what do we have left now, Kasich, right? They're getting their money from special interest groups. They're getting money from lobbyists. Those lobbyists have total control over these people. What's good for the country, they often won't do because their special interest group doesn't want them to do it. With me, I'm only here, look, I don't know. I think I'm going to win. I'm doing very well. But if I don't, a lot of people said, why do you even do this? What do you do? You have a great life. You have a great family. You have a lot of money. You built one of the greatest companies in America. My company is phenomenal. And I built one of the greatest companies in America. And they say, well, why do you do this? I do it because I want to give back. I'll tell you something. We have a country that's in serious trouble. We have a president that doesn't want to say radical Islamic terrorism. He doesn't want to acknowledge what's happening to us and all over the world. I do it because I want to give back, because I think I can give back something that nobody else can. And the beauty is that I'm funding my own campaign. So Johnson & Johnson and all of these big pharmaceutical companies and all of these big oil and gas companies like Support Crews and all of these big companies have nothing to do with me. I don't, you know, I don't need to do anything for them because they gave me nothing. I didn't take any of their money. Mr. John, let me ask you, I talked to the first Wisconsin female lieutenant governor, Margaret Farrell. She's not a feminist, but she said she used to teach sixth and seventh grade. And she said if some of her students said some of the things you say about men and women, they would be in a lot of, okay. have a lot of trouble. I became a politician eight months ago. During my life, I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of victories, mostly victories, almost all victories, but I've had a lot of victories. I've had a lot of fun. I go do shows like Howard Stern, who's actually a much different guy in person than he is on the air, but, and I do lots of things, and never thinking I was going to be a politician. And believe me, if you got a guy like Cruz, uh, talking to his friends or his buddies at the table, if you got a guy like Kasich talking, you know, they act like, oh, they're so, so innocent, they're wonderful people. If you got a Kasich talking to his friends and his buddies at the table or on the golf course, because he says that's what he does, he watches golf all the time on television, which is wonderful. Uh, let's see what they said, okay? Let's see what they said. And I did say uh, nothing's presidential except victory. Victory is presidential. And I did say about Rosie O'Donnell, and I did say about Megyn Kelly, because she doesn't treat me right, I'm on her show all the time, and she doesn't treat me right, she shouldn't put me on the show all the time, and if she didn't put me on this show, her ratings would drop like a rock. And she's only successful, frankly, I think she's successful mostly because she follows Bill O'Reilly, but that's beside the point. Uh, so I say things about certain people, and I'm open about it. But I will say this, you go behind the scenes and you see what Ted Cruz, I don't know if anybody saw the video that he made of him and his family praying, where they were doing retakes, takes, all over, and it lasted for hours. Why don't you go study that video, and you tell me whether or not he's real. You tell me whether or not Ted Cruz is real. Go get the video that they made that was released, and I think you know the video I'm talking about. You get the video where they were making commercials and using his family in a very, in a not very nice way, and you play that video for the people of Wisconsin, and you tell me whether or not Ted Cruz was real. Because I'll tell you what, he's not real, and I know people. I've made billions of dollars because I understand people. Your immigration policies, a lot of people here in the state are scared about because we have a huge dairy farming industry. That industry relies on immigrant labor to be successful. They're telling me, if you round up all of the immigrants and deport them, the agricultural when economy you, in the state yeah. is going to go bust. When you need help, the people are going to be able to come in. When you can't well, get people, they're going to come in, but they're going to come in through a legal method. When you need help, we have the same thing up in the wine country in California, and when they need help, those people are going to come in, they're going to show, they can't get them, and they're going to have them, and they're going to come in legally. It's going to be a wonderful system. They're going to come in legally. But we have people coming in all over. Right now we have 179,000 illegal criminal criminal immigrants. Okay, these are criminals. These are people convicted of crimes and they're all over the United States. And we're having, whether it's Kate in San Francisco or Jamil in California, we're having killings, murders, we're having things. The 65-year-old the veteran, female veteran, who was raped, sodomized, and killed by an illegal immigrant, we're having killings all over this country. And now on top of it, we're starting to take over people from Syria. And we don't know if they're ISIS-related, we don't know who they are, where they are, there's no documentation, and Trump is going to stop it. Now, maybe people think my stance is tough. I said we have to have a temporary ban on Muslims, and now people are sort of saying, wow, that's not a bad idea. When I first said it, everybody said, no way. When I talked about Brussels a few months ago, is a hellhole. I said Brussels is a hellhole. The New York Times did a 
big major story on me saying what a horrible thing to say about Brussels. And then you see what happened a couple of days ago. And now everybody's saying Trump was right. I was right about a lot of things. I was right about taking the oil. I was right about Osama bin Laden because I talked about him before it blew up the World Trade Center. I was right about a lot of things. And I think I have a lot better handle on this. And by the way, I'm right about NATO. We have NATO and we're giving countries a free ride. We are really, NATO is, is obsolete, it's old, it's fat, it's sloppy, and we are giving, and it doesn't talk about terrorism, and we're giving countries a free ride. We are taking countries, and we are paying a totally disproportionate share. We owe $19 trillion, it's gonna be soon $21 because of that horrible budget that was just passed, the omnibus budget, and I wanna tell you, what we have with NATO is a disgrace, and we can also go into the United Nations. That'll be next. Paul Ryan doesn't agree about banning Muslims. I don't care if he does or not. I mean, if he doesn't, he doesn't. I'm saying, I think, until we find out what's going on, we have to do Look, the man, this, this wise guy, horrible human being that was caught last week, he was living with all of the, his friends. He was saying a few doors down from where he grew up. They all knew he was there. Everybody admits they all knew he was there. They never turned him in. Why didn't they turn him in? They should have turned him in. Instead, the cops found him by luck and go in shooting. Now, why didn't they turn him in? Why didn't the people in San Bernardino who killed 14 people in California, why didn't their neighbors say that there were bombs all over their apartment? There were bombs all over that apartment. Their neighbors saw the bombs. Why didn't they say, hey, wait a minute, these people are up to really bad things. There happened to be many bombs all over the floor of the apartment. That's not a normal situation. Why didn't they turn them in? We got a really big problem with radical Islamic terrorism. And until our country realizes it, and until our president is willing to talk about it, but he's gone now. He's, he's out of it. I don't think he knows what he's doing. I mean, our president is grossly incompetent. And I don't think he has any clue what he's doing. But until he's willing to mention the name of the, pro of, of the problem, you can just, I mean, we're going to have, a, and this is a problem that is getting bigger and bigger and worse and worse, and mark my words, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better, unless I'm elected president. I will stop the problem. Okay, you, you, we got to go. Whoops. Um, Sorry. Can you talk about thank, you. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you I'll see you at the speech. Favorite thank number 12. Thank you. Favorite number 12. Let's go. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Be careful.